Hi, welcome to Midwest Magic Cleaning. My name is All of the Gilmore Girls, and today we're going to be cleaning an extremely hoarded garage, specifically one that's owned by a compulsive spender. Two compulsive spenders, actually. Now, if you watched the video from last week, Jason and I cleaned the entire inside of the house, minus the basement, and we saw the wife's hoard, which was clothing. This week, we'll be seeing the husband's side of this in the form of tools, books, antiques, puzzles, and even more clothes. Oh, and tubs lots and lots of tubs. Now the bar for this goal is set pretty low, but it's still going to be difficult to achieve. They haven't been able to park a car in here in a very, very long time. My original goal was to clear this out enough to where they could park both cars in the garage, but they just have so much stuff that's impossible. So I had to adjust that goal down to them being able to park one car in the garage, and we did achieve that, so suck it. When you have a garage that's this cluttered, the only real way to make any progress is to start moving things outside. However, if you just move everything one at a time, you're just going to have a driveway that's massively cluttered and chaotic. So we're going to do this garage like a giant jigsaw puzzle. And the first thing you do in a jigsaw puzzle is start separating out the pieces and finding all the edge pieces. And if the puzzle has a special feature like, let's say there's a group of purple flowers, we'll get all the purple pieces into one pile. And if the puzzle has like a whole bunch of nipples in it, because you do really weird puzzles, then we'll find all the nipple pieces and put those together. We're going to do the same thing in this garage. We're going to grab an empty tub and start putting all like objects with like objects. So I may fill one tub with nothing but books, one with nothing but puzzles. They have a ton of old jars and vases. Those will all go in the same tub as well. It not only makes sorting easier on our end, it makes finding easier on their end whenever they start going through these tubs. I get asked all the time, do I label the tub? that we're packing. When I can, we do. In this instance, I didn't. There was way too much and we had a limited amount of time. However, if you're packing things the right way and you're stacking things the right way, you'll be able to tell the owner exactly what's in each of these tubs or give them a pretty good idea and they'll be able to find the stuff that they need. Because remember, in the average house, I would fill one tub with books or one tub with Halloween decorations. In this house, I will fill six tubs with those things. So in other words, in a normal house, it's harder to find stuff because you're looking through one tub which contains one set of items. In this household, I can bring him outside and say, these six tubs are nothing but Halloween decorations. These five over here have nothing but extra clothing, and they'll all be stacked together on top of each other. So it strangely and ironically becomes easier to find the things you need when you have that many of an item. Now, finding the individual items, that's a whole other story. I'm also going to be using my grid method to clean this garage so it doesn't become overwhelming. And that's all a matter of perspective. We're not cleaning the garage. We're cleaning this eight foot by eight foot section of the garage and nothing else. So the goal is to clear this square of garage completely of all clutter. Then when that's done, we don't start putting things back. We move to the next eight foot by eight foot section. We'll then clear that section, bring everything outside, and then continue the process until the garage is mostly empty. Don't forget that when you're doing this, take frequent breaks because this will wear you out like old underwear. I don't know what that means. Now this particular garage is a special case in that almost nothing could be thrown away. These are all collections and in fact I think we only filled two trash bags full of legitimate trash and most of those were boxes. Now you may be asking why we're taking stuff that's already packed in boxes and putting them into tubs and there's a couple reasons for that. First, don't you ever quit question me. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get aggressive there. Second, it's actually easier to stack tubs than to stack cardboard boxes. It's much safer. But three, and more importantly, we can stack things much more efficiently than they had them stacked. So we'll be able to consolidate more items into a single space, and the tubs are more structurally sound. So just by repacking these things into the tubs, we're actually saving a considerable amount of space. This is what I like to call garage tech. Tetris. Side note, I've had many people ask me what Tetris is, and it makes me feel ancient every time.
Now there's one thing you'll notice if you're paying attention. Pay attention, Chad. Chad. And that is that I don't spend any time wrapping up glassware. The simple reason for that is that we just did not have time. If I would have wrapped all the glassware in old clothing or newspapers or some sort of padding, we would have been there for three solid days. There was so much of it. However, I've packed long enough to know how to secure glass in a way that doesn't make them bounce around, especially when it's in a tub. If it's in a box, I would never do this because boxes can get squishy. Tubs remain rigid. So the way that I do it is I set them in the tub in the same way that I'd set them in a cabinet. I make sure they're all touching and then any extra things that I find like a plastic Walmart bag or extra non-glass stuff, I can kind of wedge in between each glass where there's airspace and it prevents them from rattling around or getting shock breakage. Now the area that we're working on right now was fairly easy to organize because he basically had antiques, jars, books, and puzzles. So I could use between four to six tubs to pack all that stuff, and it was really easy to keep all the like objects together. As we maneuver around the garage, it becomes a little bit more scattered, and we start running into way more objects that just don't fit into tubs. We'll get to that here in just a bit, so be patient, man. Weird side note, my back was actually out during this whole thing, or healing from being out earlier this week, so I had to be extremely careful with how I picked things up and what I picked up. I genuinely should have just been resting and not doing any cleaning, but one, this guy severely needed help, and two, I just don't want to skip a weekend video. This isn't just a thing I do to help people. It's not entirely altruistic. This is my hobby. It's my geek thing. So not doing this for me would be the same as most people putting their phone down and turned off for like an entire weekend. They would go nuts. <laughs> I said nuts. That was pretty cool. Once we have this side mostly clear, we're gonna bounce to the other side. And one of the fortunate parts is that he had a whole bunch of stuff already packed up in tubs. Most of this stuff is just old clothing. Remember, we filled 10 tubs and two closets just from their bedroom with new clothing. All the tubs with red lids that you see here, that's even more clothes. All the ones with yellow lids are filled with the souls of the damned and one wolf, one live barking snapping wolf. I don't judge, I just stack. But that did make it infinitely easier because all we had to do was pull those things outside, which freed up a ton of room on its own. And then the rest of this was just a matter of repeating what we did in the first part of the garage. Now, some of the things we found in here were pretty interesting. We filled one entire large tub with nothing but light bulbs. He's got maybe a dozen batteries on chargers, the kind of batteries you use for like electric lawn equipment. There were three space heaters, a massive amount of tools, many of them still in the package. I think I found five or six full sets of screwdrivers that had never been opened. At a minimum, he had a duplicate of pretty much everything. On average, he had six plus duplicates of everything. And on the extreme side, he had even more than that, maybe a dozen sets of Allen wrenches, the same Allen wrenches, probably 50 to 75 rubber straps. And I would estimate somewhere around 200 old jars. There are genuinely enough things things in this garage, the basement, and the house to start a small flea market. And by the way, when we go back to do the basement, you'll notice that it's just as bad, if not worse. Hopefully we should be back next week to do that.
Now, I had a pretty good idea of how we were going to restack all these tubs that we were temporarily storing outside, but it was around this point that it started to kind of fall in place for me because we could start to see the garage as it was more open. And the reason that's important is because you can kind of see the things that we can't move outside and realize how he's utilizing the garage. So he had workbenches on one side. He had all of his tools on the other. He had a station where he was charging all of his battery packs up front. And so you can kind of look at that and see how he moves and flows through the garage when he's working. Knowing that and knowing that we also needed to get at least one car to fit in this place, I decided the best way to do this would be to stack everything right in the middle between the two garage doors. I knew that we could go at least four tubs, if not five high, without them being a danger of falling over. And then anything that's left over would go on the left side of the garage, the side that contains his bright green toolbox. We just decided to put things back in a way that allowed him to walk through those items, kind of like the aisles of a store. Because we figured if he wasn't going to be able to park a car in that side of the garage, we might as well utilize the open floor to store the remainder of his stuff. So now knowing that information kind of focused me in the direction of knowing what I could still pack up and put outside versus what I could pack up and just kind of set aside in the garage to save my back. Because now now this was open enough to actually be able to work in without making more of a clutter pile than was already there. Now the unfortunate part is that there's so much stuff to put back in the garage that this cannot be used as a typical garage anymore. Its purpose is not to store a car and its purpose is not to be a workshop. Its main purpose is storing things and there was just no way we could get around that. As badly as I wanted to turn this into a place where he could comfortably work even with a park car inside of it. They just quite frankly own too much stuff in order to make that happen. And the sad part about this is that this will take more than therapy to fix the problem because I don't believe they know they have a problem or they don't recognize it as a problem. It's just this fun thing that they do. They would first have to recognize that this is an issue and then on top of therapy if they chose to get it. I believe they would need a full-blown life coach to come in weekly and help them start to pare this stuff down. And if they have trouble letting go of the actual items, that may take years to clear this out enough to where it could be deemed livable again or comfortable again. This is actually clean enough to where I, can, I would even consider this to be livable. It's just cramped and annoying because you constantly have to step over or walk around stuff.
I feel like the most labor intensive part of cleaning your garage is when you get down to the last of the scattered extras. Because if you pack up a whole bunch of clothing in tubs, that's fairly quick. You throw the clothes in the tub and then you carry the tub outside. It's just a two step process. When you've got all the main stuff carried outside and put in its temporary spot, all the stuff that remains is just miscellaneous. And so you're always going to have a couple of tubs that just have random junk thrown into them. That can be taxing on your brain as well as your body because you're constantly bending over and picking up stuff. And so you're in this up and down motion just to be able to contain a whole bunch of just random unrelated items. And even if we were labeling these, I wouldn't even know how to label the last few tubs. I mean, obviously you can just put miscellaneous on there, but I still try to put them in some semblance of order. So I would probably have to label them something like roughly square shaped items, things that aren't red. Just like the bedrooms, there were some stuff we couldn't get to, and it's just a consequence of time and knowing that you have to find a stopping point at some point. I would have liked to have done the work shelves, which I did do a couple of them just very, very briefly, like just a quick once over. But had we had another, say, four hours, I would have liked to have pulled off everything from all the shelves and from under the shelves and restack that and tub anything that looked like it wasn't used regularly. But even if we did have that time, we actually used every tub in the entire garage. So we would have had to have been pretty creative in order to make all this work. This part of the garage looks super scary because there's so much stuff, it's basically inaccessible. This I think is what overwhelms most people because they see that big pile and they're like, man, I have no idea where to even start. My suggestion is to always just grab something and move it. It doesn't matter where, just get it in motion. It kicks your brain into another mode and before you know it, you're just working without thinking. So in my case, the thing that's bothering me is a big stack of yellow lids. Since that is invading my brain and my vision, I just grab it and move it. And that makes me realize that the majority of the stuff in this pile is just bulky things that make it look worse than it actually is. But just grab something, anything at all, even if it's like a small piece of nothing, like your mom, hi -oh! and just get that thing in motion. Your brain and your body will follow suit.
When you're cleaning a garage like this, you typically go into it thinking that you're going to wear yourself out moving stuff. And that's true to a certain extent. But the thing that takes the most time and the most effort is actually sorting stuff. And in a garage that's this cluttered, that is absolutely necessary. By sorting stuff and putting like stuff with like stuff, you're doing yourself a favor because it makes those things easier to find. If we just started cramming all the stuff into tubs and stacking them, all we've done is hide the clutter inside of an organized looking cube. And though that may look prettier than it did, we didn't actually do anything to fix the issue. So that's why we're taking so much time to go through each of these boxes of clutter and repacking them into new tubs. That way, if he's like, have you guys seen my chainsaw blade? We don't have to point to like 30 tubs and say it's somewhere in there. Instead, we can point to one of the four tubs that we specified as tools and say it's in one of those four. More specifically, it's in one that we used to put nothing but spare parts in. All your wrenches and screwdrivers and socket sets are in this one down here. And the elbows of your fallen enemies are all in this one. I, I don't know why he'd collect elbows. But, you know, who am I to question someone who's slain so many enemies? Hey, look, he knows what he's doing. I don't. By the way, interesting side note. On the last video when I was cleaning his bedroom, a lot of you pointed out how cool and creepy the Freddy Krueger mask was on his dresser. He actually painted that himself. He said he ordered blanks from Germany, and then one of his hobbies is actually painting up those masks to look real. I thought that was super impressive. He did an incredible job. I've mentioned it before in other videos, but when you get into compulsive spending and hoarding, and you start learning their personalities, you find that a huge amount of them are extremely artistic. I don't know what it is. It has to be something that happens in conjunction with hoarding disorder, because that's a neuropsychological order. There's a physical problem with the brain that causes a psychological response that's triggered by trauma. So like there's an actual physical misfire in the brain that has to be related to their artistic tendencies because almost every hoarder I've ever met has been extremely crafty and extremely artistic.
For those who weren't aware, we hit 300,000 subscribers this week. So I wanted to thank everybody who hit that button. It really made me happy. I, I didn't have a great week, still sort of not having the greatest week, but seeing everybody rally behind hitting that 300,000 mark made me really, really happy and made my week a whole lot better. So now our next goal is half a million. Every time that number goes up, it gives me a little bit more hope and a little bit more faith that we can actually hit the million subscriber mark and get the gold plaque, which is the main reason I, I even want to hit a million. I just want the plaque because I like shiny things. Mmm, shiny. For those of you who are new to the channel, I do an extra video every Wednesday for members only. That is a subscription-based members only area. Do not do that if you can't afford it. This is only an area meant for people who want to show a little bit of extra financial support for the channel and help me do these free cleanings. That money goes toward paying Jason for his work as well as paying for all the cleaning supplies that I use in my normal cleanups and also gas for my helicopter because I don't go anywhere unless it's in a helicopter, son. Call me old helicopter Johnny back in Mobile. Yo, man, is that old helicopter Johnny? I don't know. Let's invite him over and see if he has to land in our backyard. I bet he does. Also, as new people come into the channel, I get more and more people asking if we sell merch. We do. I link that in the descriptions of all my videos. And if I ever forget to do that, it's also linked on the about tab and those just aren't t-shirts they're like a print on demand sort of thing so if you like a design but you want it on a coffee mug instead you can totally do that i personally have the designs all tattooed on my butt but that's just how i roll son in other news and this is a pretty big one for us we finally have the method in place to sell the things that i use in my videos so microfiber ultra fine microfiber possibly the vacuums at some point all of that is finally set up the only thing we have to do now is just smash out the website real quick which both myself and Emily know how to do so very soon I should finally be able to start selling the things that people ask for all the time that way you don't have to go searching through Amazon and trying to find the exact thing that I use I will just flat out sell them if that works and we start making enough money off of the sales part of this whole endeavor I will finally be able to get a building and make an actual storefront and then that building will double as my YouTube studio and that will be open to the public. Anybody who happens to be through my area or just wants to come and visit will be able to access that, take a tour through our business and just BS with me for a while. As long as you're not a psychopath. The tours are not open to psychopaths.
And one last thing, I do a YouTube live every Monday. I typically set out a subject that I talk about in sort of podcast form. And then after I've covered that subject for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, somewhere around that area, then I just dive into chat and we hang out and we BS and we ask and answer questions. And it's super casual. I always put up a placeholder about what that subject's going to be. And I typically do that around Sunday. And I usually go live sometime around 1 p.m. Central Time. That time can vary, but I'll always have the time listed on the placeholder thumbnail. So that's another reason that if you're not subscribed and you like to watch things like that, subscribing will at least make that thing appear on your timeline or your For You page or whatever the hell YouTube calls it. So all that said, thank you again for the 300,000 subscribers. I'll see some of you on Monday for the Monday Live. Members, I'll see you next Wednesday for your members only video. Everyone else, I'll see you next weekend. And if you don't like that, you can just lick my butt. Later.